Okay, so um, so today's time is meant for final exam review. Um, I thought I would use a chunk of the time, probably about 30 minutes or so, just listing the topics that you are supposed to know in the sort of in in sort of uh, main uh, main flow. As in, uh, let me do it this way. So I a final exam review here. And I'm going to try to fit in everything that I will mention in the way of topics into this little corner of the board. And that should probably take us about 30 minutes or so. And then we'll reserve the remainder of the time for any questions that people have. Um, maybe you are reviewing some of the midterm questions before I was telling you to. Or maybe you are reviewing something there or maybe there's a, a particular area of topics that um, you didn't get it the first time around. The second time might be easier to understand. So, um, so we'll plan for that. So, um, so now that we are at the end of the semester, I can uh, group the topics in a slightly different way. In a way, it actually makes more logical sense than the way we covered it. I mean, you know, the physics 4A is a challenging class because I kind of have to assume that you don't know any physics or whatever physics you know is not at the level it needs to be for calculus-based engineering physics. So uh, we have to introduce topics in a very particular way. We have to do kinematics first. We have to introduce force. And we have to talk about energy and momentum before we can expand on forces um, again. So um, now that we are at the end of the semester, I can actually tell you the topics in a more logically oriented way. So let me uh, try to divide them up in that fashion. So I guess I'm still going to put kinematics on its own. So there will be, so the, the topic groupings are roughly kinematics or you know motion things dealing with describing describing motion um, you are not looking at how things came to move just how it's moving um, so uh, I will some mention some topics within kinematics the then the next big uh, grouping of topics are I guess what I was trying will try to call forces and torques so this is the new grouping that I'm talking about. So when you are dealing with the torque, it, you really want to associate it with the force because that's, uh, you know, torque is the rotational analog of force. So conceptually, they go together. We couldn't introduce them together because um, you really need to know about energy and momentum <laughs> before we can do other interesting things with the rotation. But now that we have done all that and we are just going over the topics again, I can group these together so that I can um, tell, you know, f emphasize how they are related. And the third um, big grouping of topic is, I guess I should label it, um, this is running out, let me use a different color. Um, I should call it, um, I think the best way to call it is conserved quantities. Oh, uh, conserved quantities. Um, mm. No, let me call it this way. Um, dynamics. Dynamics with conserved quantities. Or, you know, energy and momentum. Energy, momentum, angular momentum. These are the three conserved quantities that we have introduced and been using this semester. And so um, all of this really, the focus is on problem solving. The kinematics, these are the problems that kind of look like your uh, word problems in math. In fact, some of the questions are exactly the word problems you have seen in your algebra and calculus classes. Um, so, you know, this is just problem solving without any knowledge of laws of physics. This is where we introduce Newton's law to um, help you describe how things move. And conserved quantities is what we introduce so that we can, you can solve a wider range of problems. Because when you're trying to solve problems with the force, at some point you have too much complication to be able to work out all the mathematics. 
that's where conservation of energy and momentum really helps. Conservation of energy lets you calculate speed of something that's moving on a curved, um, curved like a roller coaster path that you couldn't do before. So um, this covers all the laws of physics, more or less. So the last grouping of topics, um, I don't really have a better name for it. I'm just going to call it applications. And the particular applications that we spent a fair amount of time looking at are oscillations and waves. And um, this is actually w one area where uh, people who have been falling behind can, can, can get caught up. Because with all each one of these, they are heavily dependent on your prerequisite. As, a, as in, if you are a kind of student who struggled in your math class, then you are always going to have a problem with the kinematics. Because, so people sometimes come into physics class with a mistaken idea that all physics is, is math. It's not. There are a lot of good mathematicians who are terrible physicists because they have zero physical intuition. But kinematics is, is one area where that description is actually correct. It is basically math. There is no real physics there. <laughs> so, you know, so no, when we are covering kinematics, if you didn't do well in previous math classes, and I'm not just talking about calculus one, I'm talking about all your previous math classes, pre-algebra, algebra, geometry, trigonometry. If you have a decade of history of struggling in math, you are not suddenly going to turn it around in one semester. It, you know, it's going to take years of work to build up your mathematical muscle. So kinematics, it, you came in with whatever talent you had, and in this one semester, we are not really going to change all that much. Forces and torques, this is where we actually are introducing new tools, something that you haven't seen in your math class. This is where someone who have put in effort into this class actually could have caught up a lot. Um, uh, and I just have to tell you, this semester I'm a little bit disappointed. I'm going to have to change something in the future semesters, mostly having to do the homework. I think that's the most uh, um, it's not just this class, it's the other class too. too. Uh, I think the way I'm assigning homework is not really encouraging you guys to do, actually do the problems. So uh, in the future semester, it's going to be some kind of online homework where um, people have better incentive and actually structure to do the homework well. <laughs> um, but forces and torques is where um, you are learning something new. And if you have been putting in consistent effort, you would have seen fruit. Now, um, for someone who haven't been doing that, you don't have enough time. Um, you, you really don't have enough time to uh, learn standard strategy and know how to apply it. There's, I mean, you need something like 40 hours of work put into solving problems and doing that. And there isn't 40 hours of work you can put in between now and the final. There's not enough time. So, um, um, so here you're kind of. Um, so this is where if you, so if you haven't done well on exam two, um, this is where I don't really want to give you a false hope that, um, I mean, you can try to study, but there just isn't enough time anymore. Um, dynamics, um, so with the conserve, laws, conservation, law of conservation, this is where really uh, physical intuition helps because the, when the problems dealing with the conserved quantities, the most difficult thing, this is where things shift. It, the course is no longer about mathematics. The mathematics involves in conservation of energy and momentum questions are actually pretty easy. The, sometimes, I guess the most difficult math you will see is with the elastic collisions. Um, there, you have to do the algebra pretty carefully. It, that part can be hard. But otherwise, uh, math is, gets actually pretty easy here. But what gets actually difficult is um, your visualization skill, your physical intuition, because there's a list of conditions you have to check. You have to figure out for yourself, is, is energy conserved, is momentum conserved, is angular momentum conserved? And if you can figure that out, you are kind of, you are lost. It doesn't matter how good you are at math. Um, so 
But the flip side of that is, you know, if you've been slacking behind and you want to get caught up, you want to read the textbook, and you want to actually learn the stuff that you're supposed to have learned for exam three, then this is where, you know, or sorry, exam two, you can go back and study it again and um, maybe, sometimes, you know, the first time you read it, it doesn't, you don't get it, but the second time you see, well, you'll, you will get it better just because you had some time to get used to the idea. So this is where, um, uh, some last minute study might actually benefit you. Um, and this is all leading up to applications. This is actually, um, so I believe one of the reasons people find physics difficult, and you know, it's not just uh, you people in the class, and it's not just uh, me as an instructor. It's, uh, physics has a, um, what I think is undeserved reputation for being difficult. But I think the reason a lot of people have that impression is the way you should, you should have approached the physics as a science is actually different from how you have been approaching other science classes. In your biology and chemistry classes, you could get through a lot by pure memorization, by rote memorization. You just memorize a bunch of facts, you don't have to understand anything about it, and then you just spit it back out on the exam and you would have done well or you just have to learn how to plug in numbers into a formula. Um, that's not the way physics works in general. That's why uh, that shift in thinking is what, um, it's challenging for a lot of people. But when we come to applications, it actually flips back around. You can get a lot in oscillations and waves with the memorization. There's a bunch of stuff that's good to memorize. With oscillations, there's natural frequency. Um, with the waves, both oscillation waves, there's a bunch of new terms we introduced, nodes, antinodes, um, the wavelength, the wave speed, and there's also formulas associated with that. And knowing all those stuff will actually get you quite far. And the things about standing waves, a good chunk of it is memorization. So, um, so, you know, for most of the semester, 75% of the semester, how you were approaching science class didn't work. And I think I tried to warn you about this every, like every single time. <laughs> um, but, uh, so this is one place where I'll say just uh, your traditional uh, um, old way of studying for science will actually pay off because um, it comes down to actually to deal with oscillations and waves properly. As you kind of saw it in lecture, it, it requires a higher level of math than you guys have. You need to be able to actually do it properly, properly. It involves differential equations, all that bunch of stuff that um, no, no one here is expected to have level of math for because essentially you need to have taken math 3 and 3s to get everything you can get out of oscillation and waves. But you know you have to come in from somewhere. We cannot require you to take two years of math before you are ready to take calculus-based engineering physics. So the way we cover it in this lower division physics, um, as far as oscillations and waves goes, it relies a lot on memorization. So in, in that sense, it's actually easier than how we are covering forces and more more basic, more fundamental topics.